Hey, I watched a bunch of stuff this week that I didn't get a chance to do reviews of. Hey, maybe I should make a list of it and share it with you guys. Let's get into it. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void. My name is Alex, and today we're going to be doing my weekly watched list. That's right. Everything that I watched this week in a list for you guys to maybe go and check out for yourselves. So whether it's TV, comedy, horror, whatever, if I watched it and I want to share it with you, I'll put it in a list every week and share it with you. I figured this is a good way for me to get to stuff that is kind of backed up in my, you know, workflow here. I, there's a lot of stuff that I get that I have to do reviews of, and I want to share that with you. And I figure if I can condense it into a small video where I'm doing one video instead of 10 or five, this is going to save me a great deal of time. So I hope you'll enjoy it. So be sure to take notes because this might be some movies or TV shows that you might want to check out. So first up on this week's watched list is Silent Bite, which is a movie that was directed by Taylor Martin, who this is their first feature film, and Simon Phillips helped write it. He was the actor in the movie Once Upon a Time at Christmas, which he played the evil Santa guy, and there was a Mrs. Claus in it, who's also in this movie by the name of Sela de Goad. She plays Mrs. Claus in that other movie I was talking about. But Silent Bite is essentially about a bunch of robbers who show up at a hotel in the middle of the night after a bank heist on the Christmas Eve. So this is a holiday horror film getting ready for the holiday horror season. If you want to watch something, you know, but they go to this hotel on Christmas Eve after their bank heist to kind of hide and, you know, get situated. But they find out that they're not the only thing at the hotel that is dangerous. In fact, there is a hive of female vampires who are there to take on the robbers and deal with the hotel manager who's dealing with both sides of the coin. So it's kind of comedic, but it's mostly like an action adventure or a horror film. And there are some comedic moments in it, but I wouldn't call it a comedy. Some of the beats in that were uh, a little iffy on it. But, you know, I thought it was a decent idea for Simon Phillips to have written about this. It definitely is a little bit of a step up in the right direction, I think, than some of the other stuff the the uh, Once Upon a Time at Christmas. You definitely get to see him say more in these movies because he's one of the robbers in the movie as well. And there are other characters that litter the screen that are part of the robbers that are very distinct and different, like a young kid, a stupid guy, and an angry guy, and then a whole, you know, hive of female vampires. But MVD sent this one out to me to check out. It's from Cleopatra Records. It just came out on the 12th. And if you want to check it out, you can watch it on rent for $2.99 or pick up a copy for like 13 bucks from MVD right now. I'll put some links down below to everything I talk about today. I would say this was about a 5.5. I wasn't blown away by it, but it wasn't a terrible watch. You know, if you're looking for something for the holiday horror season coming up, maybe this will have some fun in it for you. Up next, Free Jack which was sent to me by Resolution. And uh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. This is a 1992 film that came out at a time when Emilio Estevez was pretty popular. You know, obviously he was pretty famous in the 80s and then he did some stuff in the 90s as well and then kind of disappeared for quite a while. But Free Jack is actually by director Jeff Murphy, who did This Quiet Earth which is one of my favorite movies. I really enjoy it. And he also did Young Guns 2, which Young Guns 2 had Emilio Estevez in it as well. So he obviously liked Emilio Estevez and he wanted to make a sci-fi film with Emilio Estevez. So this movie is about Emilio Estevez playing the character of Alex, who is a Formula One racer. And he's on a race when he suddenly crashes and gets transported into the future, many years into the future where everything has changed. And apparently bounty hunters from the year 2009. 2009. 
has uh, picked him up to basically replace his mind with a billionaire's. Essentially, he tries to find all of his family and friends in the future, and there is a lot of craziness that ensues. This is a really weird kind of futuristic movie. Not exactly the best thing that I've ever seen, but it's not a terrible watch. I actually found myself enjoying it, and there is an all-star cast in this one. Emilio Estevez, Mick Jagger, Anthony Hopkins, like what the fuck, Rene Russo, David Johansson, AKA Buster Poindexter from the New York Dolls, AKA the taxi driver in Scrooge, Niagara Falls, Frank. But yeah, it's actually not too bad. I really enjoyed it. It was nice to just kind of tune off and like not have to think about anything and just kind of watch it. I actually watched it all the way through, no problem. So I, I would give this one about a 6.5 maybe a six you know it's somewhere in there up next on my weekly watch list gotta get that right <laughs> 13 game of death unrated from dimension extreme extreme, 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 extreme. extreme. so this one is a thailand film that was remade into a movie called 13 sins uh, but this is the original one, and I just actually talked about it in my recent haul video. And this guy who's lost everything basically gets a phone call telling him to kill the fly on the wall. And when he does, they're going to give him a bunch of money. And if he continues to do everything that they say, he'll get more and more money up to $100 million. So he is doing all these different sins these different 13 tasks by an anonymous caller that get worse and worse and worse. And it's actually a really fun concept that the remake is really good as well. You know, they actually do some different things in it, but they're kind of similar actually in a lot of the different tasks that they do. This one is a different flavor, a different vibe to it, uh, but I enjoyed it. I still enjoyed watching this one. This is by director Chukyat Sakvirakul who is a Thailand director and, you know, had a really great idea and they put it, I think it's based off of a manga. If I'm correct, there's a comic book that came out for a short while and then they turned it into a movie. So very cool concept. This one's a little graphic and gross in some moments. There's definitely a, a well scene in this one that is so disgusting that you're just like, oh no. I still think I prefer the new remake over this one a little bit. It's way more intense than this one was, but you still have to appreciate this one. I give it about a seven or 7.5 out of 10. Up next on my weekly watch list, I actually watched a TV show on Amazon Prime that I've been meaning to watch, and that is The Edge of Sleep, which is with star Mark Fishbach, who is Markiplier, you know, the YouTuber. Hi. Markiplier. And this one's actually pretty cool. This is by director Corey Adams, who did Macho Tail Drop, which was like a skateboarding movie. Man, does this guy have a really good eye for some like very cool visuals and things. Everybody that worked on this TV show, I think, did a really good job. This is a fun one that you're going to want to watch if you like psychological, trippy, weird movies that are like just trippy. It's essentially about this guy who's a night watchman played by Markiplier who has a problem with sleeping and he has since he was a child. He's terrified to discover that everyone in the world, when he wakes up, went to sleep the previous night and has died. So everyone that has fallen asleep that night has died somehow and has not come back. Now there are survivors. There are people that have not gone to sleep yet. And he teams up with a band of survivors, including his ex-girlfriend that must stay awake and uncover the secret of what this global epidemic is before they all fall asleep. Now, The Edge of Sleep is actually based on a novel, which is by Jake Emanuel, Willie Block, and Jason Gurley. And apparently, I guess Markiplier wanted to do it. It's an interesting story, though. And if you look at the book on Amazon, it actually is being compared to something like House of Leaves. So, you know, it's got an interesting story. And it is super, super stylish trippy there are some segments in the movie i think there's like six episodes and they're like 20 
to 25 minutes each. So it goes by pretty quick. It's like watching a movie. Doesn't end on a note that a lot of people are gonna love, but I think it kind of makes sense and it works for this style of TV show. I really enjoyed it. Like I genuinely think that this was a very cool idea. Gave me some sort of Lovecraftian cosmic vibes trippy like you know mind stuff going on here which i absolutely love and i think people who like that kind of stuff should watch it and give it a shot i think i would give this like a, a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10 and it's on amazon prime right now for you to watch every episode i don't know that they can continue this but i hope that i get to see more stuff like this in the future from them i thought markiplier was actually pretty decent as an actor in this movie you can see some flaws in it but for the most part it actually worked check it out up next and last but not least on my weekly watch list is a documentary paranormal demonic and interesting this one i was reached out to by the director is shannon alexander they made this documentary called it's coming it came out in 2023 technically but it's finally getting to see the light of day, you know, for the public. And you can actually rent it today for like five bucks. But they reached out to me to check it out ahead of time. And I've just now gotten to it. And I wanted to talk about it because I didn't get a chance to do a video of it yet. So that's why I'm also doing this video so that I can get them all in there. Hope you guys don't mind. But this one is about a family, like a Brooklyn mother who has like three kids. And she is currently being sort of harassed by demonic entities that are affecting the children. One of their middle-aged kids is like actually talking and being harassed by this demonic spirit that will shift around the room and watch him all day long. And this goes back even further to the mom who has had this experience when she was younger. They moved into their father's house when it's like an apartment in New York they moved in there and things just got worse for the kids but the mom's been experiencing stuff like this since she was 11 and it all gets stirred up again now whether or not you believe in this kind of thing this documentary is very different because it doesn't really like try to goad you into what to think it really just presents everything and lays it all out and lets the people who are involved in the documentary speak about the things that are happening now, there was a couple of moments that I don't know if they were doing camera tricks or something like that on the screen to kind of simulate what the people were experiencing because they didn't explain. So that was one thing about it that I was a little confused about, and it kind of made it feel fake in a way. Not saying that, you know, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter because I, I do like the approach that they're doing here, but I felt like some parts needed to kind of be ironed out and explained a little bit so that we knew what was real or what was not but they kind of just let you figure it out from the side of the family the mom and the kids and then them discussing what they're seeing and experiencing and they document this whole thing i i did like this i wasn't like super over the moon about it i'm somewhere at about a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10. if you are into these kind of things i'm a little particular when it comes to these things i can be very very picky about them so you know maybe you won't be as picky as i am but this is not a bad one because I like how they did the style of documentary in it like i said it's up now for you to rent it's called it's coming 2023 just look for the one with the family and it says it's coming on the bottom and uh, you'll notice the difference. It's a documentary, so it should be pretty easy to find. But yeah, it's like $4.99 if you want to check it out now. But yeah, guys, that's everything. That's all the things that I saw this week. I will put links and things down below for you to check everything out. So if you want to watch it or rent it, you can. Uh, obviously, anything that's for rent that's open on the on the digital space i'll just leave that out on the links but i'll try to include everything i can down below thank you mvd entertainment for sending out the film for me the silent bite and thank you resolution for offering up some of these movies and i hope you guys get a chance to check out some of them if they sound interesting to you check them out but yeah let me know what you think about this one did you like it did you enjoy it did i do it good enough i'm still kind of ironing out how i want to do the format for this one so It'll change over time, but for the most part, here's what we got. And I think it's a good way for me to include stuff that I don't have time to do a full video of. And I hope that everyone appreciates that so that 
it's something rather than nothing. But yeah, let me know what you think about these movies in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and the little bell notification to let you know when I got more stuff coming up. Thanks for coming by. And as always, long live the void.